Well, for our North Country history lesson, we meet the mother of American nursing. Emily Griffin tells us about a Potsdam native who revolutionized the profession. Prior to the Civil War, there were nurses, yes, but no formal nursing education systems in the United States. Something that would change with this woman, Linda Richards, born in Potsdam in 1841. At a young age, she grew very familiar with the ways of nursing. Her father died first of tuberculosis, and then her mother, she also got tuberculosis. She ended up dying, and uh, Linda cared for her during that trying time. She was just 10 years old and already a natural. She got engaged to a man who went and fought the Civil War. He came back in a very, uh, shall we say, deteriorated state, unfortunately, and he soon died. She nursed him through that period, too. Through these experiences, Linda knew she wanted to spend her life helping the sick. She was hired at Boston Hospital, but was surprised to learn there was no formal training not there or anywhere in the states until New England Hospital for Women and Children started forming a program. Linda was the first to enroll. The story goes she was the first woman of the class to step up there and get her diploma and officially become a professional nurse. She hopped around to many hospitals, training other nurses and learning more. Her schools were tended to be the models that were adopted for other nursing schools across the country. So in that way, she's kind of like the the mother of American nursing. Both near and far, she spread her wealth of knowledge, establishing schools, curriculum, and standards. And she advocated for nurse and patient rights. She got a big interest in the welfare of mental patients in uh, asylums. And she was a big advocate for their treatment and developing ways to treat them effectively and caring for them just as equally as the regular patients would be. When she fell ill in her 80s, Linda returned to where it all began, the New England Hospital for Women and Children, where she passed away, leaving behind standards and curriculum that are still in use today. Emily Griffin, 7 News.